everyone? Welcome back to Yoke's Kitchen and today we are cooking gumbo collard greens. Something very different, but you will be the talk or the conversation uh, topic of that meal when you actually introduce this to your family. Now your grandma might be mad with you, that ain't collard greens, but I bet you she won't put that fork down. So what you're going to need, I have two bunches of collard greens here that have been picked, washed, and cut. I like my collard greens cut thinly. I do not like um, thick cut collard greens. If that's what you like, make sure you do that the way that you like it. Um, also right here, we have some andouille sausage. We have some sno smoked turkey wings. We have thick cut bacon, but this bacon actually has the skin still on the back of it. So that's gonna give you and render a nice fat. And in our veggie plate, we have a rough cut onion. We have two celery stalks. Now my celery is still whole because I'm going to take it out right after my roux gets started. We have some colorful peppers. I obviously didn't use green because there's a lot of green going on in this pot already. So this is for that pop of color and um, flavor for your base. And also right here, I have a finely chopped up one whole jalapeno. And if you look right here, I have four garlic cloves that has been smashed. They are not chopped or cut or anything. They've just been smashed so that we can release that um, garlic flavor in um, our base. Now over here, what we will be seasoning with, you are gonna need some butter, some onion powder, some garlic powder, complete seasoning of your choice, some red pepper flakes, as well as some cayenne pepper, just for a little bit of heat, that's optional. Some smoked paprika, is this? Yes, this one's smoked. You're also gonna need a little bit of sage, some Dano's Original, your choice of Creole seasoning. Slap your mama, Tony saturates, whatever it is that you choose, um, you can choose that. You're gonna need a whole box of chicken stock as well as some olive oil. So now that we know what you're gonna need, I am gonna show you how I pick and cut my collard greens. Now before I show you how I um, clean and cut my greens, I went ahead and I dropped my smoked turkey wings into some boiling water so we can get that first boil, boil off all of the froth and impurities, and then I'm gonna reboil it in some fresh water, and I'll show you that once we get to that point. But right now, we're gonna talk about the greens. Now, when you're picking collard greens, you wanna make sure that your leaves are firm, that they're not sagging and they're not soggy, that they actually stand on their own that's how you know you have a nice um, collard green. This one is a little lazy because it's a little wetter than the rest of them, but that is okay. Now, you can choose to do this however you want. The reason why I do this the way that I do is because I do not want any of the stem in my collard greens. I don't like the stem of the collard green, so I pick that out and then um, chop them up. So how do I do that? You can choose to do that by hand or use a knife. I do it by hand. So what you are going to do is stem side up, and that would be uh, this side here where you can actually see the rib of that stem, and you're gonna fold the leaves to you, like so. So as you're folding that leaf, you're gonna just put some pressure on that stem, and then just pull it apart, like this. And you're gonna keep going as far as it'll allow you to go. And when you pull up that last little bit without actually tearing the uh, leaf completely, that is how that should look. So as you can see, there's no longer a stem in my green leaf. And you're gonna continue to do that process. I'm gonna show you again. We're gonna fold the leaf, stem side up. You're gonna keep tearing that away, like so. Yes, it may, oh, that's gonna to take too long. Well, you can do it with a knife or however you choose, but that's how I do it. Get that separated like that. I got two more here to show you, like so. 
tear that apart. And last one, fold and tear. Now you know the collard greens do have very long stems, so what I did was I chopped the stem um, at the rubber band, or a little bit before the rubber band, and um, I dropped them in water immediately. As soon as you get back, um, get home from the store, the whole leaf needs to go in some water because it's no longer rooted and it's no longer cool. So you need your leaves to stay firm. Okay, so your leaf should look like this. And what you're gonna do is you're going to stack your leaves like so. One on top of each other, like this. Now, if you want, which I do, I crisscross the bottom of the leaf just so that I can, don't have any straggle pieces at the end when I get um, my chopping done. Now, you are going to roll that collard leaf like this, very nice and tightly. like so. Now you have it nice and tight. Now you can choose to cut that in half, bring that around like this so that you can have more control of what it is that you're doing. And you are going to thinly slice those greens. Get you a nice tuck. Keep it together. and cut. Now, these have been washed. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And there you go. Nice strips on those collard leaves. We have our cast iron skillet going on medium high heat. I am going to make my roux in my cast iron skillet and then we're going to transfer it over to our pot. But take a look right here. We have our second boil on our turkey, smoked turkey wings. And do not throw this water out um, before you actually use this as your base for your collard greens. Yes, we are going to use some uh, chicken stock, but we're also going to use some of this as well. Now, we already know I told you about bacon. Bacon has not been rendering enough fat for me um, lately. I don't know what's up with the bacon. <laughs> so I am going to put some olive oil in the bottom of my cast iron skillet to help that bacon out just a little bit. And I am going to add my bacon to this hot frying pan. And I am going to make this crispy, nice and brown, and render as much of that fat or that grease from this bacon. And once it starts to get brown, I'm also gonna fry my sausage to give that just a nice little char so that when it's in the pot, it doesn't look so bland. Okay, so you can get this, let this bacon cook up. Now all of this is flavors. We are building flavors for this gumbo. It may not be the way you do gumbo or your grandma or anybody else. This is the way that I make it. And again, it's your blueprint. You can add or take away anything that you want. You can even make this a whole vegetarian meal if you like. All right, so the bacon is fried nice and crispy brown. This is the color you wanna go for, like so. So we're just gonna get this out and set it aside for just a moment.
I am also going to fry that sausage just to get it brown as well so that it doesn't have that just plain look to it or uncooked. You want to get some nice color on this as well. So lay everybody flat. Let it cook on brown on one side and then you'll turn it over and brown the other side. Give this a couple minutes and we will be ready to turn these over. Our sausage is nice and brown on both sides. We are going to take this off of the heat and we will be adding this back later once we get that roux going. And we build the flavors in the pot. Now you don't have to fry the sausage. You can just throw the sausage in the pot and just throw everything else if you don't have time. This is not a critical part of this, but it's just something that I like to do is because I like to see my, um, my sausage cooked. All right, so we are going to start making our roux. To our grease, our bacon grease, a little bit of olive oil, and now the flavors from the sausage. We are going to start making that roux. And you are going to drop your flour in. Now your flour will cook very quickly, so make sure that you keep stirring. Based on the color that you are going for, you leave it on your fire, um, depending on your likings. So that was actually a half a cup of flour. So I am going to keep stirring, stirring, stirring until I can get all of that oil incorporated. And we get that nice color going. Now all of those little specks that you see in there is bacon, and those are your flavors, so do not take that out. So keep stirring, keep stirring. We are going to turn this to medium heat. And just keep going. So you get all of that. Nice and dry. All right, so our roux is changing colors. We have a nice caramel color going on here. You gotta keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring because it will burn. It's nice and thick. We'll see, three hands. You wanna get all the excess off of the sides just so everything, ouch, can cook evenly. Like so. Okay. So, now to this, I am going to add my vegetables. And my vegetables are going to help get all of that extra goodness off. So we have that roughly chopped onion. We have two whole celery stalks because I'm going to take the celery out. I just need the flavor of the celery. We have some peppers for some color. We have a whole jalapeno cut very finely. And we have four cloves of garlic smashed, not chopped. here and just put this in. So I am going to use the vegetables to pretty much get everything up out of this pan. 
and also cook them down until they are translucent. And I burn myself and I don't know what I burnt myself with. Okay, to this we are also gonna add our half a stick of butter, just so that we could make some more and loosen it up just a little bit. Half a stick of salted Land Lakes butter. And my fire is on medium, low, almost. All right, so get that going. Now remember, this is just the base. We are gonna add some liquid to this and we are going to create that liquid for our collard greens. This is how we are looking. At this point, I did add a touch bit more of olive oil just to get that uh, roux off of the edges and off of the bottom of that cast iron. We are going to start to season this. All right, so we're going in with some complete seasoning. And it's gonna give our um, the rest of, well, it'll give our turkey wings some time to finish. But we wanna season your base so that is the Tony's Saturate. Season your base so that you can add your liquid to it. We have some smoked paprika. Some sage. You shouldn't be doing this over the steam. That's why it gets kind of sticky. some garlic powder. Some onion powder. A hit of cayenne pepper. Remember you have a jalapeno in there already. Some danos. Get all of those seasonings nicely cooked up. Turn that down. So remember, this is just your base. A little bit of salt to taste. I am also just going to put a little bit of the liquid off of my turkey wings to kind of get this going together. Okay, so this is that half a cup that I used for my flour. Get everybody nice and happy here. Yes, you still want it to be thick. You need that to be thick because you're gonna add all of your liquid when you get ready to get your collard greens going. But now it looks like a paste, see? 
this is probably better than that, better than bouillon. That is your base. Oh, my celery. <laughs> I almost forgot to put the celery in. Now I'm going to give this celery a little squeeze to try to get the flavors going. Turn it. And I'm gonna have to add a little bit more of the liquid so that can get cooked down. Told you, this is Yolk's kitchen, not the perfect kitchen. All right, so let's just make a little crevice in here for this celery. We're gonna take this celery out. That's why it's whole. And I'm gonna just put this on top of it so that it can kind of get just the flavors from it. And let that be happy for a little bit. Now to my turkey wings, I am going to add a one carton of, this is chicken stock. As you can see here, the a lot of the water has already boiled out of it. So I'm trying to keep all of those flavors. I am gonna add one carton of chicken stock and then we'll be adding all of this back into our green. As you can see, they've been boiling for about 45 minutes. So I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes in the chicken stock and then we will build our pot. Okay, so I removed my base out of that cast iron skillet. I set it aside, I need to make some room. So now we are going to work with this deep pot. If you have a bigger one, smaller one, um, use what it is that you have. Remember, this pot does look a little bit, um, doesn't look deep enough for our collard greens. The collard greens are gonna wither just like cabbage does and everything else. So as you start to add that in and that steam hits it, they're gonna wither, so don't worry about that. Now to this, I am just gonna start adding everything back. I can turn that off and I am going to start building uh, that base or using my base to start building um, my liquid for my greens. Now, um, let's go ahead and add a little bit of olive oil so that when I drop this in here, we don't have a sticking situation. It's on medium high. It's not quite hot enough yet, but that's okay because this is already cooked. I am going to add this into the pot. The celery is still in here. I'm gonna leave that celery in until the end and take that out once my greens are done. All right. Get your spatula, you need it all. Just get, clean up that plate or whatever it is that you put this in. Like so. So we are going to move that around, coat the bottom of it evenly, and we are gonna start adding our liquid. So we have our turkey necks going. I am going to just start taking the liquid from my turkey necks and adding it in to my roux base. Give it a spin. 
Now, why didn't I just do this in this pot to begin with? You need to make sure you have a pot that can handle a lot of heat when you're making a roux because it will burn. Okay, so let's continue to add our liquid. Touch that, that was hot. Let's throw in these um, turkey wings as well so I can make some space. Oh, my dish rag, where is it? Now these have been boiling for about an hour. We did a first boil, we threw that liquid off and then went in with a second boil. Let that boil for 45 minutes. Uh oh. And then we added a carton of chicken stock. Let that boil for about 15 minutes. And now we are adding it into our pot. And such. We are going to add our sausage back, as well as our bacon. You didn't have to, the bacon did what it was supposed to do when it rendered the grease for the flavors. It's your choice if you wanted to put that back in there. All right, now look at that. Our remaining liquid that is in the pot, I am going to add that to this. Let me get my oven mitts. And we're gonna judge. It happens to me sometimes to where sometimes I do need to add some water. okay because you are seasoning your base. You want that stove up that will I don't like to see that. All right, let's give this a stir. And we're going to see what we're working with here. Sorry about that, my camera died. So at this point you should be tasting and seeing if you need any salt, pepper, or whatever it is that you need. Um, you're gonna go ahead and add that in now. I am gonna add a few red pepper flakes in here just to amp up a little bit of heat, just a few. And I am also going to add, I have half, um, half water, half chicken stock. So I have two cups of water, two cups of chicken stock just so that I can loosen this up just a little bit more so that we can get these greens cooking nicely. Like so, okay. So I'm gonna crank up the heat a little bit to medium and I'm gonna add my greens. Now, from here on, you just gotta be patient. So it's gonna be about an hour before you get ready to eat. So I'm gonna add my greens by the handful into my pot. Don't worry, how are you gonna get all that in there? You don't worry, it will get in there. So you're gonna get as much as you can. As you can see, I only have a little bit left. But once I put the lid on here, you will see, and these will end up cooking down to pretty much nothing. Now look how good and clean those greens are. The water is clear. So make sure when you're washing them, you get it nice and clear. Because that first wash is gonna be pretty green. Let's get that in there. Just a little bit left. 
All right, so we're gonna get this covered. We're gonna clean up and I will see you in about an hour. And this is what we're looking like. Take a look at this pot. Before I stir it up too much, I wanna get those celery pieces out of there because I don't want you nor my guests to have that celery chunks. So we're gonna get those out. Remember, we just wanted that for flavor. But everything else stays. I'm gonna give this a nice stir. But it's been about an hour now. We were cooking on medium low. All of our turkey wings are broken down very nicely. Now you had the option to actually pick the meat off of the bone, but I'm not. The bone has so much flavor, so I wanted that to pretty much continue to just release those flavors into this pot. These greens look like they're very tender. And now we are going to get ready and serve us a plate. So with some tongs, I am gonna pull out some greens. Ooh, y'all. Get off. Get us a couple pieces of sausage. Oh, that's hot. Put that bacon on there. Let's get some real piece of turkey. Here's some turkey right here. Some turkey. Now, had I had a turkey drum the color of the turkey would, would have been darker, more of a burgundy-ish tone. But we didn't have that, so we are going to use what we got. Gotta get some of this juice on here too. Mm. Look at that man, some good old cornbread. Mm, mm, mm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my gumbo style collard greens. Look at that. How yummy does that look? Now there goes our color, our um, peppers, that was our color. So we had some red pepper and green pepper in there. And dooley sausage, some bacon some smoked turkey wings. Let's get a taste. Mmm. <laughs> Woo! Mmm. It's hot. It is so good. Wow. All of those flavors just married so well. The greens have absorbed so much of that as well. And it is so good. Now you can add or take away anything that you want to this. Um, very good. Mm. Ooh, that is good. I did it with this one. I don't hear you asking for none. I don't eat spinach. <laughs> this is not spinach. He don't eat greens, y'all. So I am going to mess that pot up. Well, me and Deanna going to mess that pot up. With that being said, yo, gang, thank you guys so much for joining. If you have not yet checked out www.yokegang.com, make sure that you do pick up a t-shirt or a patch. And even better, join the Yolk Gang All In. Hit the link. Join the fun. We're having us a great time on our lives and I don't want you to miss that. But listen, this is so good. And like I said, 
it's not good because I cooked it, but you do have to understand while making this meal, my model, good food ain't fast and fast food ain't good. So you gonna wait on this. With that being said, y'all already know I love y'all for life. Mm -hmm. Peace.